Nebraska, last year for Big Red, it started off pretty well. First seven games, they won all seven, which was more wins than what they had the entire 2015 season. So things were on the upswing for Mike Riley's squad. Then the game met Wisconsin and the overtime loss, and a sign of things to come. Nebraska would end up losing the next three of their last five games. And it was a 9-4 season, a three-win improvement, granted, for a Big Red. But the way the season ended with that slump, yeah, probably left a bitter taste in the mouth of Husker Nation. So changes are in store, though, for Nebraska entering 2017. We're going to start on the defensive side, and before we do that, did you know that in the nine wins that Nebraska had last year, they only gave up 16 points per game. Pretty good. But in the four losses, not so good, giving up 41 points per contest in those four defeats. Kind of see where I'm going with this. Yeah, changes definitely on the defensive side um, have to be made. And that, of course, starts with the defensive coordinator. Mark Banker was not money in the bank in those uh, big games and naturally – Costed him his job. And him and Mike Riley, the head coach, have been coaching together for a long time. So you know that had been a tough decision for Riley to make. So enter Bob Diaco, the former UConn head coach, fired last year, but has had several stints as a defensive coordinator, including Notre Dame. So maybe the 3 4 defense, which Nebraska will be changing to, is just what the doctor ordered. We'll find out and we'll see if Nebraska can generate a pass rush. Last year, uh, they didn't get to the quarterback too often. But individually, doing all that he could was freedom and commandum. Um, so we'll see if the 3-4 will be more suited for him, the defensive end. Uh, projected to start nose tackle once again for Nebraska. It looks like they'll have uh, Nick Stoltenberg, a uh, junior. Both him and, by the way, Akin Mullendum are both um, underclassmen, both juniors. Linebacker, going to be the least experienced area as far as that defense goes for Big Red. Um, Diedrich Young, the second, a junior at the inside linebacker. But the other three linebacker spots, very raw in that area. So the 3-4, in my opinion, this is going to take some time for Nebraska to get adjusted to, as well as the uh, new uh, defensive staff, which, by the way, will also include a new corner and safety coach. But to tell you the truth, the secondary was the strongest part of Nebraska last year. They were a third in the Big Ten in interceptions, and they returned almost everybody from this unit, and that does include Chris Jones, a very talented corner. Um, could be all Big Ten by season's end. And speaking of corner, Joshua Kalu looks like they will move him from corner to the safety spot. And one safety spot that definitely is solidified is Kyron Williams, who is the leading returning tackler for the Huskers, had 69 stops a year ago, and led the team in interceptions with five including the game-winning pick against Minnesota when the Golden Gophers were driving at the end. Williams' interception sealed the deal in that game. Now, talking about the offense, and defense isn't the only area for Nebraska uh, that's uh, not immune from changes, okay? Offensively, Tommy Armstrong Jr. started more games than any quarterback in Husker history, but there were also plays that Nebraska purposefully ran for Armstrong Jr. to run the ball. You're not going to see near as much of that this time around because battling for the starting QB positions for Mike Riley's team, a couple of pocket passers, okay? One, Tanner Lee, the former Tulane quarterback, started 19 games for the Green Wave in 2014-2015, uh, did throw for about 27 touchdowns, but also threw 21 picks, so keep that in mind. If he doesn't get the starting job, then Patrick O'Brien is in line redshirt freshman, four-star player um, in the state of California. Again, both pocket passers, and Riley has already emphasized that this will be a uh, pass-first offense. Doesn't mean they'll throw it 40 to 50 times a game, but passing as opposed to running will be the number one priority. Now, wide receiver Jordan Westerkamp is going to be missed, but they do have some other guys capable of being the number one target for either Lee or for O'Brien. Uh, we'll begin with Stanley Morgan Jr., one of the more talented receivers uh, for Nebraska, um, and also, too, in the Big Ten Conference. And DeMornay Pearson L., I remember, had a terrific freshman year, both receiving and returning punts in 2014. The 2015 had a couple of major leg injuries, and last year did play, but was never really at 100% speed. Nebraska's hopeful that he will be this year entering his final year. Looking at the running back situation, Nebraska just did not really have a whole lot of pop last year when it came to running the ball, just barely over four yards per carry, even though Terrell Newby uh, was at times a threat, especially catching the ball out of the backfield. So this spot really is up for grabs. 
And look, I've had Nebraska subscribers on this very page since I first started doing the blogs back in 2009, back when Nebraska was a member of the Big 12. So I'd really love any Nebraska fans' input on who they think should be the starting running back because I, I think this is really a toss-up, okay? Uh, you can go with Trey Bryant, who to me looks like the best um, balanced back as far as running and blocking, plus has terrific footwork. I'd probably favor him personally, but I don't live in Husker Nation, so I don't really know what direction they're going to go in as far as who that starting tailback would be. Mikhail Wilbon or uh, Divine Zigbo, they can go with either of those choices or with, of course, uh, Trey Bryant as well. So big decision that Coach Riley and the staff will have to make once we get into um, August in two days. Offensive line does look experienced for Nebraska, returning both tackles, including Nick Gates on the left side and also the right guard is back in um, Tanner Farmer. Special teams, plenty of experience there. Drew Brown, yep, he's finally entered his senior year. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, two years ago, he was second team all Big Ten, and the punter also returns. Looking at the schedule for Nebraska, no reason why they shouldn't start um, any worse than 2-1. and one. Could be a 3-0 start if that second game at Oregon is successful. Remember the Ducks were bad last year, 4-8, and eight, and fired their head coach Mark Helfrich. Now Willie Taggart's there, and... I would expect Oregon to be a better team already because they've made some coaching changes. And Royce Freeman, by the way, is back for Oregon, the terrific running back. So Nebraska will face a big test from Oregon's quack attack rushing attack. Um, last year, Nebraska beat Oregon in a close game. But trust me, Nebraska fans, coming from a Sooner fan, funny things happen when you travel to the Pacific Northwest. So beware. First two games for the Big Ten. Should be wins for Nebraska. The two worst teams are on Nebraska's schedule from the conference. You got Rutgers, who's pretty much the Kansas of the Big Ten, and then you play Illinois right after that, and new head coach Levy Smith. The two games after that are bear traps. Wisconsin, the defending division champions, but you get them at home, and then the next week, Ohio State. I don't see any way how Nebraska's going to beat the Buckeyes. Last year, Ohio State put over 60 on the board in Columbus. And then later in the year, you see some other games. Penn State, the defending league champions, uh, you got to play them um, in PA. That's going to be a tough call. And then Iowa at home to close the season out. Now, the Vegas over-under four wins. Okay, Total wins that Vegas has Nebraska projected is at six. Do I think it's going to be a situation where they break that mark or they miss it? Or do I think that six wins is just about right? I'm going to say they win more than six games. Again, I like the secondary, an awful lot. The offensive line is going to be pretty good for Nebraska and even better the year after that, okay, because of the amount of experience that they'll have coming back for 2018. Um, so I think those elements alone uh, will give Nebraska more than six wins on the schedule. I think six is way too low. But here's the thing. Nebraska still has some questions to answer as far as the quarterback. They still have questions to answer as far as the ground attack. They've got to do better than what they did last year, okay? And the 3-4 defense will take time to get adapted to. And unlike Wisconsin, Nebraska has to play Ohio State and Penn State from the east. Wisconsin dodges both of those teams. So Nebraska did not get the kind end of the Big Ten schedule. Nebraska will finish in the upper half of the division. But I'm going to say they'll win eight games this year. And I still think that Wisconsin is the team to beat in the West Division. That's my look at Nebraska. We'll catch you next time.